Hello again. It's Saturday. It's 3.30 in the afternoon, April 12th. I'm just doing a quick video on the gasifier progress. Um, if you've seen the last video and you're looking at this, it doesn't look like I got too much done since you've seen the last video, and that was probably three months ago or so. Progress has been a little bit slow. I've been kind of waiting on these flanges. Um, I was supposed to get them done at the local Votech, but you know, with the snow days and the, the delays with everything, they kind of got really far behind, and I ended up getting impatient and just cutting them myself. Believe it or not, I cut them with a grinder. Now I went through probably about 35 cutoff wheels to cut these rings, but I'll show you the dimensions and I'll show you everything there is that I have as far as information goes on these flanges and I'll show you what they're for. I also made this funnel that consists of 16 pieces all the way around. and. Um, I kind of have a jig set up here and I'm going to open it up right now. Two of these pieces are not tacked in place. These are the last two. So I'm going to lay them on the side here. I'm going to try to show you what it looks like inside here. There's a piece of all thread and there's a nut tacked to the center of three circles. So I can kind of adjust them to where they need to be and sort of lock them down in place with a jam nut. And I figured out all this stuff, you know, for all those people that said you'd never need this math stuff when you were in school. I was one of them, so if you're a teacher and you're watching this, you could say, I told you so. <laughs> but uh, So I made this, flat, this funnel. This funnel is going to go inside this hopper, um, and that's de directed toward making the wood go right down the burn chamber. That's the idea behind this, and I'm kind of kicking around the idea of using some high temperature concrete on the outside of this to maybe act as an insulation to maybe burn off some more of the moisture as it sits in this hopper, the wood sits in this hopper. And I've kind of got a, a special condensation lid planned and I'm kind of going to try to go over that in a minute. But while I was waiting, before I got impatient and cut the flanges myself, let me show you some other flanges over here. This one here is the, uh, the condensate lid. There's going to be a ring that I'm going to make. It's about one inch tall. It's going to sit right around this perimeter here. It's going to get welded right to the inside diameter of that circle. And there's also going to be a ring that goes around the outside. That's about the same height. And then this is going to be welded to the top of that. So it's going to act like a big trough. And anything that lands on the inside of this lid will kind of run down the sides and hopefully end up in this and it's going to have a drain in it eventually. And hopefully I'll be able to catch, capture a lot of the moisture. Now the inside diameter of this is uh, 10 and, I think it's 10 and 5 eighths. I'll show you on the flange templates that I made over here. Um, now everything is numbered and I don't know if you can see. This one, this one here is flange number one. This one here is flange number four and I'm going to go over this kind of Let's see, this one here is, this is the top of the vessel that the hopper is going to go into. This is flange number two. Okay. Um, and the one that's around the hopper itself is flange number three. Okay, so now when we look at these templates, you'll kind of have a reference to how I did this. Now what I did on these templates is I had a center punch mark for the center of the circle. And you can see I cut out different diameter inside diameters for different flanges and different outside diameters for different flanges but I'll try to zoom in here and hopefully you'll be able to see any information that you might need if you were going to attempt to do something like this and by all means if you had any questions feel free to ask Just drag that into the sun a little bit more So that's the basic gist of it. You know, you hold hold the scribe on the center of it, and you can kind of rotate this template around. Really, the outer one is the only one I used. The inner one is for something else that I didn't use yet. Um, so that's the situation with the flanges. That's pretty much all there is to that. Now, I also got this door. I wanted a nice door with a nice gasket 
and uh, this this door I got for free it has a nice gasket surface on it I don't know if you can see it really seals nice when the door is closed so as you can see I cut the radius to the vessel it's gonna get mounted somewhere on this vessel uh, I don't want to mount it just yet because I don't know where the bottom of that hopper is going to be. Which is kind of a question that I have and I'm going to put out there for anybody that really wants to answer it for me. Is it better to have more of the, the hopper buried down inside the vessel? Or is it better to expose more of it and maybe insulate it so that you have more room inside the vessel for gas to expand? So maybe if anybody wants to answer that question for me, that might help me determine how deep I want to mount this thing into that vessel. Uh, I do have the high temperature concrete done inside the burn area. Um, I won't pull it off because it's really not that important to see it, but I will tell you that I tried to save some time in a lot of ways as far as building a frame goes. I do intend on connecting with a framework this vessel to the other leg here so that everything that hangs on this scaffolding, this scaffolding by the way, came from tractor supply. And here's the box that it came in. It's a six foot multi-use scaffold. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have a part number anywhere on it. Right here. So you can see. I got that from Tractor Supply, as well as a lot of this hardware. I think I even got this this gasket material. It's a rope stove gasket kit. I plan on using that in between the hopper and the flange. So when that is is taken off, there'll be a gasket there, a high temperature gasket. It's rated for like 2,000 degrees. Um, also, I know a lot of these parts are pretty heavy. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and have a way of taking this thing apart. So I'm going to kind of back up here a little bit. You could see that there is a Harbor Freight crane mounted to the top of this thing. And it's a hydraulic crane. And I'm going to kind of step up here on this bucket so I can kind of show you what it is here. Um, sun's kind of right in my eyes here. Now this handle will be attached here. It's kind of just sitting here right now. But this whole thing is sitting on linear bearings and it can slide. So as I pick the parts up out of the gasifier, I can kind of slide it back and forth. I don't know how easy it is to see that. It's kind of bright out here. But I'll give you a good look at these, these uh, linear bearings here in a second. And I am going to reinforce this. Um, I'll give you a shot from the bottom here. This is one inch stainless round stock. Travels the length underneath here so it's like guide tracks for this to sit on okay and right now everything's just kind of clamped in place nothing's really bolted fast 100 percent yet but i am gonna actually put some of these linear bearings upside down just so it doesn't have a tendency of tearing them open and you know having parts fall but i'll take a walk over here quick and i'll show you what one of these linear bearings look like This is the linear bearing and it's got three sets of rollers and they're kind of adjustable. They have cams on them. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there's a part number or anything on them. Doesn't look like it. But you can kind of see, you know, they're, these were experimental and they got thrown away. And I always have a use for weird stuff so I kind of save stuff like that. But I. But if you didn't believe me that I cut these with a grinder, these are four by four sheets. I ordered two four by four sheets of quarter inch steel. And here's all the leftover pieces. And I also ordered two four by four sheets of eighth inch steel, which is what that hopper is made out of. That's all eighth inch material. The rings, the uh, the wedge shaped pieces, the circles, everything there. And that, and that flange is also eighth inch, okay? Um, now I did mount this tank to the scaffold using brackets that I kind of felt were 
just easily available without having to make stuff custom. These were actually uh, winch mount brackets from Harbor Freight, and I even do have the boxes. And I got these U-bolts, I think I got them from like uh, Home Depot or something. These, these um, rungs are about one inch in diameter, so I found a U-bolt that had the right diameter. Now these are the boxes that those plates came in, and they're just a standard winch mount plate from uh, Harbor Freight. So I was trying to save myself some time. I was working a lot of extra days and didn't get a lot of time to get out here. You know, so I mentioned that I cut all these flanges with a grinder and it was kind of a pain. It took me an entire day to do it, but I wanted them in the worst way. And I kind of beat the snot out of my little DeWalt grinder here. So while I was down at Harbor Freight, I ended up picking up another heavy duty four and a half inch grinder. How heavy duty it is, I don't know, but you can kind of see the pile of grinding, grinding uh, cutoff wheels right there. So. I will tell you that the Harbor Freight ones are not as good as, say, the DeWalt ones. I did buy, and they're, they're not even too much more money to buy the DeWalt ones. I think they're like seven bucks for a five pack down at Tractor Supply. And I think for a 10 pack of the cheapos at Harbor Freight, they're like 13 bucks. So you might pay an extra buck, but the grinding pads are definitely better. The cutoff wheel pads are definitely better. So uh, anyway, I want to get back to my, to my notes here. And I know Flash has a lot of, Flash 001 USA has a lot of information um, on his YouTube videos as far as how to build this stuff. But I just figured I took a lot of notes from Flash and I also have a lot of my own notes. And if you're wondering what's all written on these pages, I actually printed out the FEMA gasifier plans and I was kind of paging through it, but I figured I'd use these pages to make my notes on. So I kind of just didn't waste it. I just kept everything going here. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about is with this funnel here, you know, figuring out this cone was kind of a pain. And uh, Flash did give you a, you know, a link to go to some cone maker website. But I have a pretty old computer and I, I didn't have the software that it needed to, to run this. So I ended up going to this website. You can see it at the top of the page here. Um, and you kind of figure out a lot of this stuff I even figured out on some poster board. I laid it out in real life size. Um, and figured out what my dimensions of each of these 16 pieces would be for this funnel that I wanted to make so that I can go from one diameter to the other. So you can kind of hopefully read some of these notes if you were at all interested. And again, this, this hopper, this wood hopper, is actually a standard propane tank. So, I mean, I assume that a lot of people would be, if you're going to be making a hopper from a propane tank, that these, these measurements might hold true. Now, the flanges that I show you on this page are pretty much the same pieces I'm going to show you on this page but I just want to be able to you know if somebody wanted to pause this at any time and kind of write anything down a lot of this stuff is just custom for for this build to fit inside that vessel that vessel was a industrial compressor that I got the tank at the junkyard for like 10 bucks so while I'm talking I'll just kind of slowly pan across these notes here and I mentioned the numbers of the flanges and all of their dimensions are here and their thicknesses are here. These two quarter inch steel plates, they're going to be for that um, that crane assembly at the top there. So hopefully I'm not moving the camera too much that you can see what's going on here. Now this ring is actually going to be welded. I explained it. That's the hopper. That's the, uh, the condensate lid. Um, so you kind of can see how I'm going to bend that ring to do that. Let's try to capture some of this condensation from the wood. I'm still kicking around the idea, maybe give me your thoughts on uh, on using that high temperature concrete on that the outside of that funnel too. This is kind of a preview of what my condensate containment lid is going to look like. You know, it'll have the air intake similar to the way Flash set his up, um, but I think every fitting that's coming in and going out of my gasifier, I'm going to oversize the heck out of just for the fact that I can always reduce it down but I can never reduce it up you know increase it so I'm just gonna kinda overkill everything and I'm kinda kicking around the idea of a side load instead of ha like I'd like to utilize the whole top of this and I'm even thinking about insulating everything here so that the condensation doesn't form on the walls inside of here it all forms in the top where it's actually exposed to a, a cooler temperature at the top of this 
So, you know, any input or any advice or any, any comments that you might have, feel free to throw them my way because nothing's set in stone until it's done. And even after it's done, it's still not set in stone. So, kind of always appreciate everything. Now, these are the dimensions for the, uh, this is 4-inch material here. These are the dimensions for the frame that I built for that crane assembly. It's kind of a list of materials. Kind of how I laid it out with the linear bearings and everything. Now this is a Flash 001 page. As I went through all of his videos, I kind of took a bunch of notes, writing down all kinds of gasket materials and dimensions for the burn chamber and the reduction zone and the, you know, the flange at the bottom. Kind of just taking notes on how things were going to be laid out. So hopefully, you know, if you guys needed any of this, it's kind of a conglomeration of everything that Flash has spread out across all his videos. And I started taking notes on this tri-filter assembly, but I did see that he changed that. He even has um, like a how-to thing that I printed out. This is a radiator that he shows you how to build and all the dimensions for that, slip and fit parts. Uh, I kind of put it all down in my notes and went through all the videos and obviously I'll probably do it the way he did all in a straight line. So some of it will be kind of, you know, obsolete, but a lot of the information I got from Flash, it's all available for downloading. Here's the information he posted on building this tri-filter assembly and all the part numbers and everything. It's all, it's all up there. You guys can kind of view it if you need to. Some of this is kind of dry and hopefully I'm not boring you too bad with this, but like I said, I'm always looking for input from people. Here's the rim. I got this rim from, uh, from Northern Tools. This is the one that Flash tells you to get. 